Hello everybody, welcome to Cinema Trailer News, my name is Chris and this will be my breakdown for episode 9 of She-Hulk. So, this is the season finale and last to discuss, so let's get into it. So, episode 9, we open up with a little homage to the original Hulk television series that came out in the 1970s. This was kind of uh, interesting and almost wonderful way to play out this episode it has been theorizing from they were dealing with the aftermath of the previous episode where she ho reached out in a public area and got arrested by damage control and is now under orders that if she wants to be let loose she can never transform into she ho again this is a call to things they got her fired from her job because the whole point was they want her to be in she ho form move back with her parents and start figuring out okay who is beyond intelligentsia and jennifer waters still wanted to do things by the book and sue pe the people responsible instead of hurting them this that's where we get a college jennifer waters shaking her booty to the camera but jennifer Waters being back home and just being bombarded with her family, she kind of uh, wants to escape and decide to take up Emil Blonsky on his offer to just go and hang out on his land and kind of uh, unwind. While at the same time, Nikki and Pa will be infiltrating intelligence and doing a physical event where they send Park in to kind of be one of these woman haters now a couple of thoughts on this this has been kind of a of like the recording there are a lot of people out there get sensitive about if she her calling out some of these people that later it says but to me so far in this episode at this point i was like oh that's it this is going to be another trash finale they're gonna rush everything at the end it's no surprise or, or they thought and they are being the one behind intelligence here and kind of the big bad of the show well he was the one having thoughts to steal she hot's blood so that he could inject himself like it was all going the most predictable route that we all saw coming all the way um, from a mile away from like episode 2 I even got a little more confused when Emil Blansky showed up as a abomination for the event and you see he, 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 oh, so abomination was a bad guy this whole time he, he, he was faking it and was just trying to get a person when working with this man and I was sitting there and kind of uh, ready to just hate this thing and then we all started hell to break loose, Titanic show out, the whole show out and Jennifer was just looking at us at the camera, this is so messy, what is this? going on do you really want this as your finale and I'm screaming at my TV no Jen I don't want this huh? as the finale and she freaking fixes it I thought I was a uh, uh, bargain however when my TV returned to the Disney Plus home screen and I was like where's my remote what did I touch for the part to be an extensive for war breaking that I'm just gonna say I think it was so much fun it just brought the whole finale to a different level that I really enjoyed the way they have Marvel Studio now part of the NCU is just a crazy talk but it's like Jennifer Waters took everything I had in my mind and complaints about NCU Disney Plus finales and was just sending it to the writers then so this is trash this is dumb this is so predictable what you guys even writing and let's be honest the writing in some of these she ho episodes have not been the best not every joke landed not every storyline was flowing as perfectly as it could which is completely understandable where there was a lot of people unhappy with this show but i never thought they would call themselves out i think it is pretty 
big person to a man that created something that was not going to be satisfying and just said it flat out to the audience and looking at walking Jennifer Water uh, the Chiho is going to face it now this is something also very much in line with her in the comments there's literally issues where she does this in sad things and just whip up the page and goes this is what are we doing with this issue why could the writers come up with a better story this is so ingrained in she her character and i know there's going to be a people who love the finale if this were Deadpool doing it all this if Deadpool was the one show up in Marvel studio and said the word this this is suck this is done let's ch change this up do this everything will be it up and but she who does it and is lazy and dumb and is trying to have your okay and eat it too really I was letting my but I've unseen her fight a uh, Marvel employees and then end up meeting what their version of Kevin Feige which is essentially a robot that if you actually look very closely it still it has the hat that Kevin Feige wears and the rubber and that was an interesting little touch but Kevin Feige Kevin, uh, he is standing for knowledge enhanced visual interconnected nexus. Just has this back and forth dialogue with Chiho that I just found pretty fun and they straight out call much of our flops in the Chiho series as a whole. And that uh, we can all agree with that it was just predictable and dumb. And like, come on, the, uh, we really want to see I finally with she her had to fight a hook out tall and I will rather much have this four wall breaking where they just admit to that and they even talk about the problems with it the movies like repeated the plot lines or character issue specific daddy issue she as well we're going to see the s men something we all want to know about and I, I thought it was just really fun and I was giggling a lot of the jokes back and forth. Four world breaking, making fun of my Marvel, making fun of the fans, making fun of expectations in general. It was just fun to me. When I'm pressing this four world breaking, it's not because I think the writer is so ingenious and mind blowing. No wonder Kevin Feige got working more the writers. You need to be next level smart to do this no if anything i can totally understand the people who think it's lazy it's just a cup of finale but i much rather have this finale they uh, this they show me and the fun you can have with chiho is that all this show has just really been harmless fun if they do a season two of chiho which i won't be surprised if they do I will for sure want them to step up the writing on here, make the jokes a little more clever. Definitely back off the legal cases in here and actually make it sound like actual practice. Some more action sequences cause this whole series proved that you don't really need big action fight or to out to be fun. And it's something I think fans would love to see. She hope kicking some butt. I think I would love to see that. And her kicking butt in the courtroom and then he kicking butt outside. That would be great. But the stuff aside, I did think it was kind of a small that she hope was able to just surpass all the BS and go right to the finale without having the big battle, without having the big climax or big exposition moment from the bad guy. He just got arrested and he's gone taken away and then we have a traditional NCU finale where it's just everything works up nicely while teasing bigger things for the future. And also a bonus that Charlie Cos the devil came back for one more episode I was not expecting that but I really work on addition because I'm so happy to see Charlie Cos here. But okay, let's actually talk about the repercussions of the finale because like with Emil Blansky, I thought he was showing up in 
intelligence meeting and he was the bad guy in terms of he wasn't and he was never working with the intelligence he never had a second agenda he actually is reforming he's essentially a good guy now on chef shark as the they were going to put something over her and make him a villain that he was uh, behind this or along with him wanting the cheat her blood for whatever reason but it turns out no Todd just pay him to show up at the event he needs money and he's just willing to do it because uh, regardless of what the event was about so abomination was real that uh, there was just a guest celebrity not really promoting or supporting the message and i guess same way on that topic we just talk about the post credit scene he takes one of his off and just got out of prison because he doesn't want to be another 10 years there kind of uh, putting abomination and a meal blasting in the pocket of the NC youth that ever want to use him in Thunderbolts or any other projects. Now I'm just going to be honest with you, it's great that Emil Blasky changed his path and become a good guy and he's now he's has this duality of like I don't really want to fight, I don't want to be a bad guy and exchange my ways but it's also feel what a down man. I wanted to see him come back and all these builders in years of him wanting and just feel underutilized and I felt like they could have done something better with Abomination so I was bummed out with the way she hawk handled that aspect of her but we'll see how they handle him in the future if they ever bring him back hopefully into Thunderbolts then we got to talk about here a uh, boost banner finally coming back from Sakaar doing what we all suspected where uh, uh, he went out and there so he could meet his son Scar and that I gotta tell you you <laughs> we an interesting choice of design for him because he looks interesting, I'm not a big fan, very different from the comments. That's all I say. Interesting, not a big fan of the look. Just like I'm not a big fan of Hulk and his regular clothing. Marvel change things up because I'm tired of Smart Hulk. Because of the comments and what War Hulk is doing, and we all know Scar Wars coming. Hopefully, there are these are the baby steps so that we can get Savage Hulk back so we can get an interesting Hulk story now where he's fighting again and it could be us and there's a lot of rumbling going around that could make a full new world order is going to be heavily tied into setting up more Hulk stuff since the leader is the villain there so we can probably expect to see Hawk and his son Scar along with she hulk in there and I gotta be honest with you guys I just don't know if I'm loving this direction for the Hawk storyline maybe maybe it will work now hand it off with Jennifer Walters making out clear that if she's going to remain a lawyer he's going to sue intelligence and he's going to work as a lawyer and a superhero which is well if we get a season 2 I will be super excited about that because there will be the perfect balance of legal case superhero actions and random dumb from in the NCU I still think she ho is this have this corner and uh, this just feel that Disney has not nailed this formula or just the way going about the Disney Plus series because although I really enjoy it, I'm not going to ignore the voices of other people who hate this show and say watching she hope feel like homework today because people want to be caught up in the NCU they don't want to feel like left out so they want to go into the next Marvel movie being completely fair and you shall never watch something they just feel like homework and uh, the upcoming Disney Plus shows uh, feel like it feels like the upcoming Echo show I'm not going to lie and not really that interested in that and I think when I watch those I feel like if like home, home homework and I really hope it really works but I'm just being honest. 
and so I think the the season finale was pretty good for the series but overall I think the series has some really big problems with the way they handle uh, Jennifer Waters and She-Hulk especially in the writings it was not very consistent and so far I think that it was um, more like okay for me overall so that's my review for She-Hulk episode 9 the season finale so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button consider subscribe to the channel and like always thank you so much for watching bye bye